Donald Trump yesterday spoke at the Detroit Economic Club. Uh, we are 25 days away from the election. So Trump is in Michigan trying to campaign there. But he's also, again, speaking at the Economic Club. Uh, I watched a little bit of this. He did that thing where he comes on stage and just stands and sways for over three minutes. The entirety of Lee Greenwood's God Bless the USA. He just soaks it up and stands there. It's one of the most bizarre. I mean, we could play it maybe later. It's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Um, so, you know, he does what you should do in Michigan. Insult the city. Call the leaders of the, the state stupid. He uh, also attacked Sean Fain. Called him a disaster. Auto workers in Detroit, pretty important. Or in Michigan, more broadly. I mean, it's just... Let's, let's, we'll start here. I mean, uh, there's uh, two parts I want to play for you. He's talking at the Detroit Economic Club, not really to voters, but um, there's been reporting that uh, Trump's co-campaign manager, Susie Wiles, is a little freaked out about the boys club attitude that the Trump campaign has been eliciting. And also just because Corey Lewandowski has come back into the fold um there's no voices to say hey maybe you do want to like try to at least appeal to women a little at least a little bit maybe don't go on and on about how stupid all the hosts of the view are and how dumb harris is and you know maybe try to appeal to women in a way that isn't just like hey we'll put you back in the home jd vance uh, style politics. I mean, the, 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 the phrase is that there's too much testosterone in the campaign, and it seems to be the case. Uh, this is pretty ill-advised. Trump repeatedly says the word rape here. It'd be nice to have a free press, which we don't have at all. We have a terrible press. But those three things we have, and we have to straighten it out. So here is the deal that I will be offering to the world, to companies outside of our world, big companies, powerful companies that have become powerful because we were stupid. We were stupid. We allowed them to come in and raid and rape our country. That's what they did. Oh, he used the word rape. That's right. I used the word rape. They raped our country. The United States will give you the lowest taxes. The lowest energy cost. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country in the world. And it's OK. So uh, this is why I want to penetrate the earth. As I reminded people of the word rape over and over again, uh, it's funny that he talked not funny, but interesting. that He talks about uh, rape because that guy has been found liable for sexual abuse in the E. Jean Carroll lawsuit and also has been accused of sexual misconduct by dozens of women. And I found this uh, attempt to neg Detroit to be in keeping with his whole energy as a sexual predator, accused sexual predator. Um, because here he does it just insults Detroit in Detroit. And for people that don't know, negging is a strategy usually used by frat boys to make women feel poorly about themselves so that they get to sleep with them. And it just kind of clicked for me when I heard Trump do this. Oh, this is his thing. So let's see if you can neg your way to winning Michigan, Trump. Here we go. We were almost paying for all of NATO. So we were getting screwed on NATO and screwed on trade. A double. Still Nobody invoking else that. Done. This is crazy. So we're protecting you and you're taking advantage of us on trade. I said, sorry, we're not going to take it anymore. But the money came. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars in NATO. Hundreds of billions. And by the way, they should be paying 3 to 4%, not 2%, okay? They are 2%. They should be a much higher. All right, can you pause that. it for a sec? But, um, I, I know that this is such a childish thing to bring up, but towards the end of Biden's campaign, all he could talk about was NATO. The NATO summit was his big boy going away party. And uh, I just find it funny how... The dynamics flipped immediately when Harris became the candidate. Trump's the old guy. He's the oldest person to ever run for president now that Biden's uh, out there or in the general election. Now that Biden's out of the race 
and um, now he's also rambling about NATO. These are not kitchen table issues, but I just find it amusing uh, how the advantage really did turn in terms of both the the dynamics of the race, but just the fundamentals of who gets to be the change candidate in this instance, now that Harris is the candidate. Percent, okay. They are 2%. They should be a much higher than that, but, but uh, that's up for whoever is going to be the next president. I think Kamala, it's not going to be high on her list. I don't think anything that we're talking about today is high on her list. I mean, the whole country is going to be like, you want to know the truth? It'll be like Detroit. Our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president. You're going to have a mess on your hands. She destroyed San Francisco. She destroyed, along with Newscom, California. Newscom. And uh, we're not going to let her do that to this country. We're not going to let it happen. Okay. All right. So there you have it in Detroit. He says that the uh, she's going to turn the entire country into Detroit. Now, what could that possibly mean? You know, this is what they also were invoking when they were trying to steal the election. The idea that these big cities, you don't know who's voting in them. Detroit, Philadelphia, Atlanta. They are tr- they are using extremely racist imagery (laughs) to basically advocate for policies that would be responsive to the right-wing great replacement theory conspiracism. But the country's changing. It's all going to look like Detroit. Keep repeating that in the state of Michigan. I want to see how that works out for you. Now, Harris has her own issues in Michigan. Um, It was reported weeks ago that the Trump campaign was running ads about how pro-Israel or Republican associated groups were running ads about how pro-Israel Harris is as an effort to rat F her in the state of Michigan. And she has not differentiated herself enough on Biden with the significant number of Arab American voters who are saying, we're going to withhold our vote if you don't stop the genocide in Gaza. Um, And that's the kind of thing where it's like, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. She should it, she should be differentiating herself more, frankly, on that. But these comments by Donald Trump don't help very much. And it reminds people of what this guy really represents. I mean, it's racial grievance. At this point, if you're still arguing out there that he's the, the guy that's going to screw the establishment, after he's now just doing the most like standard neocon talking points about the Middle East, how he bo- wants to bomb the hell out of Iran. He's doing fundraisers with Sheldon Adelson's widow. Um, just standard Republican stuff. Tax cuts for the rich. He's a he's a Republican politician through and through, not even with the veneer of being the guy that's going to break up the establishment. That's not a thing anymore. He's the racial grievance candidate. That's where he's at right now. And unfortunately, there are many Americans that are okay with that. But let's be clear. He's not, a, he's not somebody who's screwing uh, up the establishment anymore. That's not what this is about. This is about racial grievance in America. But he does love to use that language of dominance, which obviously always uh, dovetails with sexual dominance. In the totally. Of, and even in that one about uh, the lead up with NATO, you know, it was about screwing, getting screwed over, countries getting screwed, countries being taken advantage of. Yep. Like there's always even it's it's somewhat of a Freudian analysis, but like I don't I don't trust Trump's self-awareness all that much. But I think a, 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 there are a number of undercurrents of things that he's accused of that he likes to, you know, uh, project outward to kind of uh, use that language on all of the other grievances he has about basically yes. everything. And, when and it, he, it creeps women out. I'm going to be real. Oh, like yeah, when I'm I sure, hear yeah. that, it, it, it makes me feel unsafe. And when you have a and when you have like literally a a standing uh, obligate a standing event every day to just like have two hours to talk like you're on the ra- like you're on like AM radio or whatever or like or like on WFAN, they all come out at the same time. <laughs> they all come out at the same, and they are struggling with women. This is the thing. He basically split with white women with Hillary in 2016. The exit polls showed that he won it's more vague i think it's more like basically a tie at this point but the the gender gap in this race is extremely pronounced and so going up there and like saying i'll say rape 
I'll say rape and then and then, you know, invoking that kind of imagery. It does him no favors. I also love the it's kind of the Trump version, almost the inverse of like when a when a musician or a performer goes to a venue and it's like, oh, we love you so much, Cleveland. And they're in Cincinnati. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I probably he's like, in retrospect, I probably should have said Milwaukee. <laughs> I, I maybe shouldn't have said the city that I was actually in. It's going to become the big shithole of America. But right. I think they got the point. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.